Fleur was given consideration. He put up three goals and five assists for the attack this past week. Joe Ranger of the Sudbury Wolves is the OHL goaltender of the week. He had two wins, a goals against average of two, alongside a save percentage of 931. Ranger turned aside 32 of 35 shots that came his way Sudbury. That is, Sudbury opened up the weekend with a 63 victory over the Guelph Storm on Friday. The six foot one netminder uh, turned to the crease on Saturday, stopping 22 of the 23 shots he faced as the Wolves dominated the Kitchener Rangers in a six to one win at home. The Owen Sound Attack Player of the Week is Montreal Canadiens prospect Cedric Gaindon. Cedric scored four goals and three assists. His three-game goal scoring streak, however, was snapped Sunday versus the Erie Otters. Let's take a look at the Western Conference standings. The top three teams in the conference are all seven and three in their last 10 games. Windsor and Saginaw are tied for the top spot in the conference, while the Owen Sound Attack are just one point behind. Sarnia sits fourth, one point ahead of the Flint Firebirds. The London Knights are on a four-game win streak, they're six in the West, and just five points back of Owen Sound in the Midwest Division. The Erie Otters are now on a three-game losing streak. They sit seventh, two points ahead of the Sioux Greyhounds, and two Midwest teams at the bottom of the standings, Kitchener ninth, and the Guelph Storm still in last place in the Western Conference. To the Eastern Conference now, the Ottawa 67s, they just keep on winning, Adrian. With a 7-1 defeat over Kingston today, they now sit 16-1, on the season. Nice school day game for them. Nice, yeah, what a school day game for them. Seven goals against the Kingston Frontenacs. North Bay and Mississauga, they're tied with 24 points. Adrian, the Peterborough Peets made a big splash this past weekend. We found out live on air Saturday night and the trade was official on Sunday. Yeah, Brendan Hoffman gets traded from the Flint Firebirds to the Peterborough Peets for, let's be honest, it was kind of peanuts in the hockey, in the junior hockey world. Uh, Mason McTavish had about seven picks go his way last year and only uh, four, five picks for, um, or four picks rather for uh, Brendan Hoffman. And that makes the Eastern Conference a lot deeper. Ottawa and Mississauga at the helm there with North Bay. Um, and then we see we see him on, on the screen right there. He he wreck, wreaked havoc in the playoffs against the attack last year. He's a big, powerful, 50 goal scorer that can hit. He's going to play for Team Canada at the World Juniors once again, and he leads. He's in, at the top of the top 10 in in goals. Like Brendan Offen's a player. You mentioned it. Flint Firebirds, I believe, got a second, two third round picks, and Artem Guriev, a 19 year old NHL prospect on defense going back to the Flint Firebirds. Now we take a look at the teams in the fifth and sixth in the Eastern Conference, the Barry Colts and the Kingston Frontenacs. Grant Clark has played his nine games, and I'm not sure how much NHL action is going on for Shane Wright currently. Do you think those two come back to Barry and Kingston? I think they stay with their NHL clubs. I've heard rumblings that Shane Wright is not coming back to the OHL. Um, he's staying in Seattle. Seattle would rather him play six minutes a game and then, <laughs> no, th I'm serious, they'd rather him play six minutes a game, practice with the team, um, and uh, get the experience of being in an NHL locker room. And uh, the more that the um, season goes along, the more minutes more that they're going to give him. Um, there's a possibility that he goes back to World Juniors, but they're also not saying anything at this time. When it comes to Brant Clark, it's really interesting to see him um, not getting very minute, m very much minutes. He played his nine games, but again, they're keeping a tight seal on that on that one for Brand Clark going back to the Barry Colts. You check every day with LA playing at 10 p.m. local time. Check to see if he's played that 10th game. I think he's been scratched for three or four games in yeah. a row now. So interesting to see what the uh, LA Kings will do with him. You see a look there at the top 10 in OHL scoring. You'll see some familiar names on that list. First off, Ty Voigt continues to lead the league in scoring with 32 points, six goals, and 26 assists on the season. Pavel Minchikov is second. He leads all defensemen in scoring. He has 28 points for Saginaw. Denny Gore sixth, third in league scoring, one point ahead of Seti Gaindo, Connor Lockhart, and Luca Pinelli. Nolan Burke and the newly acquired Pedro Pete Brennan Offman are tied for seventh with 24 points, one ahead of Matt Bay Petrov and Cameron Tolney. And finally, let's take a look now at Owen Sound's, to Owen Sound's top 10 scorers. Denny Gore and Cedric Gaino sit one and two in team scoring. Colby Barlow enters Friday on a three-game point streak. He's third in team scoring with 20 points. Big weekend for Servak Petrovsky, including his first career hat trick. He's fourth in team scoring with 18 points. Ethan Burroughs is fifth, one point ahead of Matthew Pappas. 
Sam Sedley is seventh there with 13 points on the year. Julian Fantino sits eighth with nine points, while four players are tied for that 10th spot with seven points. Now let's get to the reason that we're all here. We're here to talk to a couple of silver medalists from the most recent uh, U17 championship in Delta, British Columbia. We got Ben Cognier and Braden Rogers. How was your guys' experience at West? Uh, yeah, it was a great experience, you know. It's uh, an honor to put on the, the Canadian logo on your chest, and yeah, it's just a dream come true. We had a really good uh, team both on and off the ice, so yeah, it was just awesome. Yeah, for you? Like, like Braden said, it was an honor to put on the Canadian flag for the first time, and just meeting new people there, seeing the best players in the world for our age, was really an amazing experience. Now, you guys went out to Calgary in the summertime, to prep for this tournament, and then you guys ended up getting selected. How did you guys find out that you got selected for the team? Uh, well, actually, our head coach, Greg Walters, came in during practice and told us we, uh, we made the team. And fortunate enough, he was our coach, so it made things a lot easier. Yeah, that was pretty cool to have him behind the bench as well uh, in uh, Delta. Yeah, no, it was uh, Greg told us, and we also got a phone call. I got a phone call from Ryan Smith, um, head coach of the Spokane Chiefs. So he told me, and it was... Just awesome, awesome feeling. Uh, I thought it was just awesome to go to the camp and to be selected. It was, yeah, just a true honor. That's very cool. Now, Ben, uh, uh, among the players that were on that team were one of your former teammates and third overall pick to the Sudbury Wolves, Nathan Vinev. How cool was it to reconnect with him with the Maple Leaf on your chest? Yeah, it was great. Me and Nathan are best buddies back home, and we had a pretty cool connection, like, growing up in minor hockey. Made kind of a dynamic duo together, so it was really nice playing with him again. And yourself, Braden, uh, what was it like to be on the si being on the same team of players that you played against in the U16 season? Oh, uh, yeah, it was awesome. Actually, uh, kind of like Ben, I had uh, my old D partner from Quinney Red Devils, uh, Ben Danford. Uh, same thing, we're best buddies. So, yeah, it was good to get back with him. And uh, there's a couple others, like Ethan Procision. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I think those were just the two I played against. But, yeah, it was good to see them again. So Now we might be keeping one of the headliners off of the the list from for the start here but michael misa exceptional talent exceptional player he was on your team you saw him score a bunch of goals there how good is that this 15 year old kid yeah he's two words for him he's an exceptional player like, <laughs> you can tell he's among the top talent of our age group as an underager yeah i know ben just said it he is he is exceptional and he definitely deserved to get that exceptional status so yeah he's pretty amazing now, you guys see Coach Walters in the room every day. When he went to become the coach of, uh, of Team Canada, Team Canada Red in this, in, in this instance, did he change at all? Was he a, or was he the same coach that you see on the day-to-day -day basis? Well, you can tell he was a bit calmer with, like, <laughs> the new stuff the others had to learn, and it's not, like, our team. But he's good at, like, adapting to new changes with, like, the new players that he has and how he teaches the whole hockey process with the new players. Yeah, I'd say the say same thing. He, was, he definitely warmed up towards the end, but I think all the boys really liked him. He was, I thought he was definitely, he's definitely a player's coach for sure, so all the boys liked him, and yeah, I just thought he did a great job. So. Still that loud voice behind the bench Oh, as well. yeah, yeah. <laughs> definitely got louder as the games went on. <laughs> Especially, I, I would assume, as they got more important, he, his voice was heard in the locker room yeah. a little bit more yeah, as definitely. well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Now, you guys actually, Ben, you scored your first goal of the season in the tournament. How was that? Uh, tell the folks at home what happened on your goal. Oh, it felt great. Like, I think it was right off a rebound. Someone tipped it in the slot, and then I had the rebound, and I tapped it in. But it was a great feeling. Just getting that monkey off your back <laughs> was probably the best feeling as a goal I've ever scored in my life. Yeah, you, you scored a bunch of goals last year, and now you're, you're realizing that you're in the OHL. It's a, it's a man's game now. So it's it's been a little bit tougher of a start for you, but Things are coming around. You're getting the chances, so your first OHL goal is right around the corner, I'm sure of it. Now, for you, Braden, you had two assists in the tournament. How do you assess your game? Yeah, I thought I played pretty solid all the way through, you know. I'm um, just trying to get pucks through, I guess, off the point. Uh, the one goal is a tip, and, yeah, I just I thought I played pretty solid. And, yeah, there's always, obviously, areas to work on, but overall, I thought I played pretty good. Now, Ben, you kind of mentioned it just in your last answer. Um, you guys were able to play with people of your or players of your own age group for the first time in a while and you guys were successful while doing it you guys made it to the silver and yeah it was a blowout against the USA but you guys 
were able to play in every single game possible. Are you coming back with added confidence? Yeah, I think so. Like, I think just for me, well, even scoring a goal boosted my confidence a bit coming back. But like knowing you belong there and everything, it just I think we have a lot of confidence coming back to the season. Yeah, uh, same thing. Just uh, I guess there's a couple times where like you know you hold on to the puck a bit more and you know you just get used to that. So I think I can bring that back here and hopefully not turn it over because I don't think Wally would like that. But uh, <laughs> yeah, no, I just think I think I'll have a bit more confidence coming. Now, back, so. is there one player that you might have played against in this tournament that you're other than Michael Misa that you're gonna be like, oh, I'm watching out for him come. World Juniors and U18s? Um, I'd definitely say Cole Eiserman. Uh, he's pretty skilled around the net. I think he almost pulled the Michigan off. He uh, hit the post. But yeah, he's just overall. And he played for the US? Yeah, US. Uh, yeah, he's one of their better players. Yeah, I'd say Cole Eiserman too, but I got another player, James Haggins. He was on the US. And he was more like a playmaker. Cole Eiserman was more of a goal scorer, but yeah. Haggins was a shifty guy, and you got to watch out when he has the puck. Even when he doesn't have the puck, he can find open space. For the for the fans at home, um, unfortunately, Bedin Braden came home with a silver medal, and they lost 11 to three in the finals against Team USA. Um, but just still an accomplishment. Still an accomplishment, but just to put it all into perspective, Canada goes in with three teams, mm -hmm. and the U.S. only has one, so they have the best of their age group. And whereas Canada's divided between 72 different players on three teams. I believe you guys got to play with Jerome McGinley's son as well, is that yeah. correct? Yeah. yeah. Was, he yeah around the, was he around the rink, Jerome, or no? Uh, no, I don't think he was. I think he came maybe the last couple games, but I, d I honestly didn't see him too much. Uh, guys, now let's go back to, uh, we'll throw it back to your minor hockey year. We'll start out with OHL Draft Day. The day you found out you were coming to Olin Sound, where were you on Draft Day, and what was your initial reaction when you were selected? I was at home in my living room. I think I, I had a lot of family there, so... I really didn't know I was going to Owen Sound on the draft day, but after I found out it was Owen Sound, I was pretty happy because of the connection I have with uh, Cedric Gaino. So he kind of took me under my wing, under his wing. Uh, yeah, I was saying, uh, just downstairs, I guess, in our living area. It was just uh, my parents' sister and her boyfriend. Um, yeah, it was just an awesome day, uh, getting my name called and uh, hearing uh, the phone ring, and I knew it was Dale DeGray. It was just a uh, Good talk, and I just thought the Owen Sound would be the best place for now, me. Now, don't you have ties to Owen Sound, or your dad got drafted by uh, He got drafted, I think, in the 11th round. Uh, I, ca I can't even remember what draft it was, but yeah, he got drafted uh, oh, a couple of years ago. I guess. <laughs> a couple of years ago. <laughs> now, it's interesting you say you didn't come to, or you didn't know if, if you were going to Owen Sound or not. Uh, throughout the year, and especially approaching draft day, how much contact did you guys have with Dale or uh, the head scout as well? Uh, I only had one quick phone call with Dale throughout the year, and it was more like the week before the draft, so I really didn't really expect much. Uh, I was the same way. I, I only really had one, one phone call. I didn't really talk to too many teams, actually, for too long, so, yeah, it was just a quick little phone call. So. Throw back to one of the home playoff games versus the Flynn Firebirds. You had an interview alongside Adrian Musso where you had the opportunity, A, to say, I'm here to score goals in Owen Sound this year, and you got to take in the atmosphere of an OHL playoff game. What was your initial reaction watching that game versus Flint Firebirds? Yeah, it was crazy. Like I said last year, yeah. like the atmosphere is great. I can't wait to like play in this rink, and now we're actually playing in it. It's it's amazing. I remember specifically, we were standing there after the win, and they're they're banging their sticks at center ice, <laughs> getting ready to go to Game Seven, and you just looked at me, and you're like. Wow, this is amazing. <laughs> I, I remember that vividly. So, yeah, I, I could. You're, you're, you were in awe at that moment, and and it's definitely a moment that you'll remember for a while. Your yeah. first time in Owen Sound. Uh, what were some of your favorite minor hockey memories? Um, I'd probably say we made. We're a pretty good team. We made it to the OMHA finals quite a few years. We actually won it. Uh, we were pretty big rivals with uh, the Markham Waxers and we won the overtime, so I'd say that. My draft year, the whole year, was just amazing. Uh, playing in the OHL Cup, that was probably one of the best memories. And yeah, just making a lot of memories throughout the years is just awesome. It was probably in minor bantam, we had this really good Junior 67s team and we went 28-2-2 two and, two and went 8-0 in the playoffs, so we had a pretty special group there. That's a lot of fun. Now you guys got stripped of your uh, major bantam season due to COVID reasons. What did you guys do in the meantime during that season to knowing that your minor midget year was your draft year? 
Um, yeah, honestly, I didn't really have a break too much. Uh, we, Belleville was mostly open the whole time. Uh, I practiced with the 2005 uh, Quinny team. Cal Yoon's is on it. Um, yeah, so I practiced with my team and their team. So I was on the uh, ice 11 hours a week. Can't, can't thank Ty Longo, the coach there, enough. But uh, yeah, I, I was on pretty much every day, so it was nice. Yeah, same here. We still had, hockey was pretty open, but we were playing a couple of exhibition games. Like, obviously, there wasn't a season, but yeah. I think that year I really improved. Like, I took the gym more seriously, and that's when my game really took off. Now, last year, there were so many rookies on that team, and when you're talking to the coaching staff, they say when the rookies first come in, in minor hockey, hey, Ben, go out and score us a goal kind of thing. Now you're an old sound in your rookie year. You're playing with structures. You're learning how to play with different systems. How did you guys first adapt to that in your time in Owen sound playing structured hockey then? Uh, yeah, I just, uh, just try to take uh, whatever they said and uh, just try to keep, I guess, keep it really simple. Just uh, not go out there and worry about points or anything like that. I just, uh, uh, Skillsy is a really good coach, so uh, he's played the game and all that, so I just try to take whatever he says and do what he says. Yeah, like Braden said, you really got to focus on the little details because the game really gets harder at this level. So when you focus on the little details, you get your game grows a lot. Uh, next question for you guys. What were you working on in the summer to prepare for your OHL rookie season? Uh, definitely my off-ice training. Uh, like, like the boy Sam. I'm a little bit <laughs> underweight, so I was trying to pack on the pounds. Good, good weight, not bad weight. Uh, but yeah, I just say more so in my off-ice training. Yeah, me too. I t took my off-ice training more seriously and really working on that speed. So I think I'm pretty filled out, so just working on the speed was good. <laughs> Uh, now, Ben, you've played 13 games in the OHL, and Braden, the, the fans at home have been able to see you seven times in the yeah. OHL. Uh, who do you model your game after, if it might be a, an OHL player or an NHL player from past or present? Um, I would say Morgan Riley off the Leafs. Their Leafs are my favorite team, so he's usually the one I try to model my game off. Just good to a good 2A player. And, if he's not on the score sheet, he's always doing things right. So That might be the only leaf that I respect, so <laughs> I respect that answer. Yeah. Me, it'd be Dylan Larkin of Detroit. I think he has a really good two-way game, really good defensively, and he's got an offensive upside to him. Yeah, he's got a lot of speed. I see that yeah. in your game. That's an int I would have never thought you come from the Ottawa area to have Dylan Larkin as your player, to watch, or player that you compare to, but I see it in your game. Um, now, guys, in your new 16 season, I mentioned it, you're really relied upon go out there and play in all situations. Now you find yourselves in a different role in your rookie year. How have the two of you adjusted to your new roles on the team this season? Uh, yeah, I think I'm honestly just happy to be here. Uh, <laughs> uh, I, I get it. It's, you know, we're the youngest guys on the team. It happens to everybody else. So, you know, I just got to uh, just work hard in practice and just try to stay in the lineup, I guess, as much as I can. So, yeah. Like last year would be, yeah, like you said, go score a goal. And this year, I think we focus more on the little things like, oh, I'll go make a hit the shift, make a bigger impact. So that's the little things. Yeah, and uh, this, is, this might be one of my favorite questions to ask all uh, rookies or even, even vets. I like to ask this question. Uh, what was your welcome to the OHL moment? I know when a lot of people in the NHL get this question, they're like, oh my God, I, I played against Sidney Crosby or I played against Connor McDavid. What was your welcome to the OHL? Um, it wasn't really, I guess, a certain player, but I just find that no matter how small you are, the bigger guys don't care if you're 6'5 or 5'4. <laughs> they, they all hit the same. And I, got, I think I got smoked a couple of times, so that was my eye opener. Yeah, same here. There's always big players out there, but that first game in the bud was like, wow, like, <laughs> this is something. I was going to say, that's two years in a row now. It's funny you mentioned that Owen Sound opened the season last year. So many rookies, and you're playing in front of those 9,000 fans yeah. in London. So very good welcome to the OHL moment indeed. Uh, first time living from home. How has the transition been for you guys in your rookie year, adjusting to a new school and living with Billets for the first time? Um, yeah, it's awesome. I, I definitely... I uh, miss home a bit, but uh, I got really good billets, uh, Phil and Sarah Rao, so it makes it, it pretty nice when you have, uh, I guess, really welcoming billets, and I live with Colby and Gav, so 
it's always nice to talk with them. So yeah, I, it's pretty good. So yeah, it's it's a, obviously a big adjustment, but I think I've adjusted pretty well. And with school going to French to English, it's pretty different, but it's going well. Uh, do you guys notice a difference in the lifestyle, maybe, of a U16 minor hockey player now compared to an OHL player? Uh, yeah, definitely uh, on the ice a lot more. Uh, always having a workout after after the practice. Yeah, it's just um, a lot more wear and tear on your body, I'd say. Yeah, like you see uh, the vets, they really prep their body and then stretch after practice. So that's like the little things I see, and which is really different from minor hockey. You really take the little things into consideration. Now, uh, I mentioned it, the Owen Sound Attack played four games. We are going to get into the first highlight pack uh, momentarily, but speaking with the Kitchener Rangers, do you guys have a favorite rivalry yet in the Ontario Hockey League? There you go. I'd say it's got to be Kitchener and London. Like, those rinks are just fun to play in, and just playing against them is really fun. Yeah, I'd probably say London. I just, I know the players and both the fans uh, really hate them, so. I think it's just awesome whenever we beat them. It just feels really good. So, A four-game week for the Owen Sound Attack. Let's take a look at the highlights last Tuesday at the Auditorium. Gets that one to settle down. Ten seconds remain here with this Rangers power play. Martin back for Pinelli. There's the chance. There's the goal. Jump to Serpa on the power play. Getting it down low. Quickly back up to 71. Captain with the pinpoint accuracy to the veteran, the Serpa. And he's just there waiting for it. Wide open, left untouched, makes no mistake. Jevic does get the puck on his stick. Missile Jevic for Serpa, and there's Missile Jevic. moment for him as he gets off the schneid, gets out of this loose puck and just slams it home with Votary down and out. The Rangers did well with the Owen Sound Attack caught scrambling in their own zone, trying to get back on the odd man rush. Petrovsky and Servak Petrovsky gets that puck to settle down. Leaving it in here is gained on and he scores! Serpa tries to give it in down low but that got caught up in the skates there. Chance for the shot and he scores! Well-known usher in the media room, Mad Max, he did call that score, but that was going to be in the back from him. Tried to drop it back for Sop. Here's Serpa for Sop. Here to Motu at the point. Schmidt, a drive pad save. Made it off the post. This is Benny away. Six and seven after tonight. Shot score. Go the Owen Sound Attacks way, a 7-1 defeat against the Kitchener Rangers. Not one you like to see, Zach, and it's safe to say we know that what happened after that. They threw that game behind them and uh, went on a three-game winning streak after that. We'll get to those highlights a little later on in the show. Absolutely. Uh, guys, just a few minutes before we went to break, you gave your answer already, um, but maybe there's others as well. Which vets took you under your wing early on, helping you get comfortable to Owen Sound and the OHL? Um, I think we have uh, great vets um, on our team. Uh, everybody just uh, helped out me and Corms and just uh, welcomed us to the team really good. Uh, I sit next to Sam Sedley, so he's a pretty funny guy, and I try to learn off him as much as I can. So, Yeah, me, like I said, definitely Cedric Gainall. Like, I knew him before coming to Owen Sound. He'd drive me to the gym every day in the summer, so we built a pretty good relationship. Only a few minutes before we have to go to break, let's throw out our trivia question for the day. Yeah, so Ben Cormier is one of multiple Owen Sound attackers that come from the o Ottawa area. So if you call in and tell our producer, Mr. Mark Berry, five players on the attack who are from that Ottawa area, you will win tickets to Saturday, November 19th game against the North Bay Battalion. So again, five players on this current attack roster that are from the Ottawa area. We'll get you two tickets to Saturday's game. One last question before we go to break, Ben. Uh, we mentioned in that interview that you were here to score goals and you're playing alongside a captain in Colby Barlow who set points record, set a rookie goal record here in Owen Sound. What has he done for your game so far uh, through 13 games here in Owen Sound? Yeah, he's a great player. Like. You see him and he just scores like a beast. So <laughs> I really try to learn off of him and practice the little thing he does and his shot, shot's amazing. That's exactly it, the shot. Do you get any pointers, tips from Colby? Yeah, I do sometimes at practice. 
Um, there we go. So Ben Cormier and Braden Rogers here on attack wrap. On the other side of the break, we'll have highlights against the Sarnia Sting. A minute and a half. A minute and a half to go. Adrian will carry on with another question. Uh, <laughs> we'll go to the next, another question. So one that we had, that we skipped on, on the U17 train, uh, talk, was that you guys had to go to British Columbia, which is a three hour time difference. And then you guys left at 3 a.m. So you got there at 4 a.m. their time? Yeah. What was that transition like when you're having to play in a different time zone? Uh, it was definitely very tiring. Like I said, you guys said, I woke up at like 2.30 and then I got on the plane and then, I don't know, I think that took us to around like one, but then the time went back, so it was like 11. And then we had to stay the whole day, go to the rink. I went to bed at like 10, so it was a long day. Yeah, it was definitely a tougher adjustment. And like I said, everyone was sick while we were in BC, so it took a little time to adjust. Any practices the first few days before you got into a game action too? Uh, yeah, we had two. Two right before and yeah, right in the game, so. <laughs> a uh, tough adjustment for sure, but you guys are back in Owen Sound now. Like I mentioned, on the other side of the break, we'll have highlights from three games against the Sarnia Sting, two games against the Uri Otters. Adrian will have what's in the helmet with the first and second round pick from the Owen Sound attack. Stick around on the other side of the break. You're watching Attack Rap on Rogers TV. This program is brought to you by Ignite TV. Now you're in command. Visit rogers.com for more details. Adrian Musso here, and we have two rookies for the Owen Sound Attack, and Ben Comier and Braden Rogers. Braden, this question's for you. You get to skate alongside veteran defensemen Nolan Seed and Sam Sadley every day at practice and every game. You see how they work inside and out. You kind of talked about Sam is your uh, stall buddy as well. Yeah. What is like the one thing on the ice that you see in their game that you're like, ah, I need to do that next time I'm out there? Um, I'd definitely say... Uh Seds is just always in the right spot. Uh, has really slick hands and uh, making good passes. He's really, really good offensive, and I 
try to take that and put it into my game. And more so Cedar. Cedar's a really good two-way defenseman, uh, really good stick. And I just try to take things from both of them uh, every game and try to try to put into my game so uh, I can uh, be better. So. The own son attack I mentioned had a busy week. We'll go to those highlights versus Sarnia shortly. But just a quick reminder for our trivia question. Um, Adrian, go along with your trivia question once again. So our trivia question is that there are five, there are six or seven Ottawa-based players on this team, uh, and you need to name five of the players on the current attack roster who are from the Ottawa area, and you'll win tickets to Saturday's game against the Brampton. Or Brampton. Brampton. You know what? There's a guy North watching out there that North might be like, oh, Brampton Italian. No, they're in North Bay now. Uh, North Bay Battalion uh, on Saturday, November 19th. North Bay's long visit to the Bay Shore, led by Ty Nelson. I believe he's up there in shots on goal in the Ontario Hockey League, so it'll be a good game here Saturday night at These the Bay These two Shore. will be for facing off against a former team teammate, too. Ethan Bruchage. Yeah, yeah, we will. Um, let's go now to the highlights Wednesday night versus the Sarnia Snake. Nice job on Chafe to hold it in. There's Gore now. Gore tries to center it. There's a man there. There's a shot. They score! Pappas finds it in the crease. Pappas. Played it up for Barlow. Here's Danny Gore now, and here's some speed with Sedley. Sedley and Gore down the wing. Gore walks in. Fire scores! Danny Gore! Caleb Lawrence had time and space, walks into it, and Ben Godro makes the initial save. He loses his stick on the play. No, he doesn't. Madden Steen walks into the shot, and Burroughs tips it in front. Three. Watching that Kitchener power play last night, adding Philip Machar into their lineup, the way they pass the puck around is lethal. There's a shot and a goal there. Bill Mann, as there was once again being hosted in Canada, and if you're wondering, that's an hour ahead. Here's a chance for Gaydo. Gaydo scores! <laughs> Steal it from Doherty. He does. Here's Gore now. Tries to send his man. Brennan scores! Brennan with the backhander. Tries to get past Jordan. Jordan threw a check there. Missed him. Puck at the side of the goal. Sting trying to get something going. They do. There's a shot. Oh, what a glove save by George. He was the only guy in the building that knew he was going to stop that. See, trying again. 30 seconds left on this Owen Sound power point. Gaindo spins around his man. Gaindo to Gore. One timer scores. Danny Gore. That one was a laser beam. Sting get it up. Wayne Wright shoots it in. Schweingruber there bumped with Way. Puck behind the goal. There's a chance. Wayne Wright scores. Wayne Wright side of the goal. The Owen Sound attack will hang on for a 6-2 victory. Their 10th on the season and their 700th franchise win as the Owen Sound attack. Was it a 6-2 win for the Owen Sound attack against the Sarnia Sting? Guys, you guys were watching those highlights for, for, for the first time and a player that stood out in those highlights was 16-year-old goaltender Carter George. When you guys go against him in practice, can you believe all the saves that he's making on star forwards like Colby Barlow and Denny Gua in, a, in practice? And he's your guy's age. Yeah, I know, it's crazy. He's, uh, he's definitely, um, he's, he's just unbelievable, honestly. He just stops every single puck, it seems like, and uh, yeah, he's just gonna be a pretty big star one day, I'm telling you. I was going to say, if he, if he gets sent back to St. Mary's at some point, he might be signing autographs <laughs> back home. He might get his own parade. But, uh, no, Adrian, what does that do for the confidence? You saw it. they put up four or five goals against, you say, World Junior Candidate goalie Ben Gojra. What's that do for the Owen Sound Attack's confidence moving forward? It's, it's big for the, their confidence. And you know what? The biggest thing about that game, I, score doesn't mean anything for me. It's the effort that they put in after a 7-1 drubbing the night before. You can tell if a good team's a good team after their effort, after a bad loss. And the Owen Sound attack came out and had an unbelievable work ethic, and it showed, and it was led by two players, in, in, my, in my opinion, 
Matthew Pappas and Denny Go were lights out in that game. Cedric Gando had, had a great game himself, so when your vets are leading, everybody else is going to follow, and that's what happened in that game. This is, that was massive stepping stone, and, it's, and it shows that you can have off nights. They're teenagers. It's going to happen. You're going to have bad games. You're going to have bad games on the road. You're going to have bad games at home. But how do you respond to that? And it was an A-plus res response, in my opinion. Thomas Labrennan did score his second goal of the season there. At that point, both goals of his OHL career came against the Sarnia Singh. You mentioned going on to the road, guys. Next question for you. You'll have an opportunity on the team's Eastern Swing to play in front of friends and family on that Eastern Conference Swing. What excites you playing so close to home early on next year for the Old Sun Attack on the road? Yeah, it's going to be great, but I think I'll have definitely a lot of people at the <laughs> game, so I'm excited for it. Uh, yeah, same. There will be a lot of people, I think, coming to the Kingston Peterborough game. Um, my sister uh, dates Don McCoy off Peterborough, so that'll be uh, pretty interesting to play him. So, yeah, I think we already got a lot of uh, people saying that they're going to come, so it'll be good to see them. Hey, no friends on the ice. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> um, as kids, did the two of you attend many OHL games, and if so, did you have a favorite player watching? I definitely did. The Auto 67 games, they were pretty good back then, so yeah. definitely Marco Rossi probably growing okay. up. Uh, yeah, I did uh, a couple years ago when the Belleville Bulls were in town. Uh, still pretty young to have like a really favorite player, but yeah, I, it was pretty awesome to see them. So I, yeah, it's just the Belleville Bulls were attended a lot of them. It's everyone's favorite time on a Tuesday evening. How could I forget, Zach? <laughs> Everybody's favorite game show, Gray County's own, What's in the Helmet, guys. This is your first time ever going to play What's in the Helmet. So there's a few rules, OK? OK. I'm going to pull a question or a statement out of this helmet, and you have to give me the first thing that comes to your mind. OK. All right? Yeah. And sadly, Ben was drafted before you, so he's going to go last, so he gets time <laughs> oh, okay. to think about it. You're going first on this, all right? Yep. That's only fair. First question. Ooh. This, is a, this has been a very controversial one. Lot, lots of answers to this one. Who has the best hands on the team? Uh, I'd probably have to go with Seds. Uh, nasty hands. Always makes the like, craziest plays, Spinorama. I'd say him. Sam Sadley, and? I'm going to go with Matthew Pappas. Like, you saw against Barry, he scored that highlight reel mm -hmm. goal. Mm -hmm. I think his hands are really good. That is the first we time we've had Pappas before. got Matthew Pappas. If you left the weekend and one of the players had house in, who would it be? You're buying houses early, guys. Yeah. Uh... I would say maybe Bars just seems like a good guy. I don't think he'd really do anything to my house, so I'd probably say him. Yeah, I'd go with Colby, too. Really responsible guy <laughs> for his age. <laughs> now, you guys are rookies, but I'm still going to put you in this position. Who would you not want to house sit? you got to throw somebody on the, under the bus here. Maybe a chafer. Like, <laughs> so much skip the dishes, it'd be all over my house. That's the second time we've heard that. Yeah. That's, that's exactly what I was going to say. But uh, I'd say Nick Chouinard, too. Oh, an OA. <laughs> we, we have Nick coming on in a few weeks. Yeah. Time. He's going to have some words to say, I'm sure of it. Uh, OK, next question. OK, we kind of uh, alluded to this in one of the previous questions, but uh, favorite hockey memory to date? Uh, I'd have to go with uh, being drafted in the OHL. It's always my, been my dream, and hear my name called is just awesome. So, I'm gonna say winning the Toronto Marlies tournament and minor bantam with the Junior 67s team. We're really like underdogs that tournament, and went all the way up and beat the Marlies in the finals. Who'd you, oh, you guys beat the Marlies in the finals yeah. in their own tournament. Look at that. Uh, ideal golf foursome. Now, Ben, I saw you on the course this summer at Legacy Ridge with your father there. Uh, are you a golfer? Yeah, me and Corn was actually went just before it got cold uh, with Colby and my billet dad. And we played against them. I think we got smoked, but... <laughs> um, ideal golf foursome. Now, it doesn't have to be you guys on the team. It yeah. can just be uh, whoever you would want to golf Okay. Uh, really sporty guy, maybe, like Wayne Gretzky, Tom Brady... And I think a funny guy would be like Jim Carrey or something. 
I'll go with uh, Biz Nasty, <laughs> Adam Sandler, and I'll throw Braden on this one. Oh, okay. oh that's, that's <laughs> nice. Bring him along for the ride. I'm sure there would be no laughs and no fun in that force. <laughs> uh, next question here. Who has the best shot on the team? And Braden, we have to give it to you for being, <laughs> well, you're pretty skinny, but yeah, people I say am. that you can shoot a puck. So they've been, you can't pick yourself on No, them, so. yeah, I definitely, I won't. Um, I'd say Colby. Uh, his release is insane. It's, I definitely don't really want to block too many shots in <laughs> practice when he's shooting it, so. Yeah, I'll say Colby too, but Julian Fantino's got a pretty rocket of shot. That's the first time we've we heard Tino. Tino's heard name, shot. but he was, he's been shooting it a lot more, as fans like to see, and the puck's been going in for him as of late. I so look forward to talking to him. We have him on in two weeks' time about his edge work. I've noticed that this year. Uh, next on, on to Antonio, Antonio Stranges. Stranges. I look yeah. forward to hearing how much he's worked on that, because you've seen it this season a few yeah. times. Jeremy Bracco, yeah. then it was Antonio Stranges, now it's Julian Fantino. <laughs> Who's the smartest player on the team? Mm. I don't know, I'm sucking up the Seds a lot, but I'd probably say Seds. Seds again. I'm going to go with Cedric Gano. I think he's just got the hockey IQ through the roof. Yeah, I, uh, I would agree on that one, his hockey IQ. I raved about it last year in his draft here. It's second to none in my opinion as well. Uh, okay, here we go. Player you wouldn't want to be stuck in a car with for more than two hours. In this case, they're driving you too because you yeah. got to ride. Yeah. Oh my, that's hard. I'll go for Thomas Chase. The guy never stops talking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I honestly, I couldn't pick anyone. I honestly wouldn't care, to be honest. If I had to pick someone, it would, I don't know, maybe Ricky, because if I, if, I don't know, if I got on his bad side of the practice, it might not be a, not be a nice ride home. My <laughs> I have to mark down all these tallies, Andrew. Yeah. You would nick a lot for a player yeah. to be stuck with. Yeah, now you guys don't have your license yet, but do you have your G1s? Is it in the process yeah. of getting it? Yeah, uh, G2's coming in March. All right. I'm still only 15, so <laughs> you need I can't, I can't get it. It's birthday. No. 15 years old. Wow. Uh, last one, and this is a new question. Who's your celebrity crush? Uh... Just a couple, like maybe Jennifer Aniston or like Megan Fox. Yeah, those are pretty good, but I'm going to say Olivia Dunn. <laughs> yeah. There we go, a rookie edition of What's in the Helmet. We should have made them wear the helmets. Yeah, they would've, they would've that's what I was that. saying. They're rookies. <laughs> that does it for another episode of What's in the Helmet. Zach, uh, to you. One more question before we go into Saturday's highlights versus the Erie Otters. Now, guys, in the OHL, you have the opportunity of practicing every day. What's that done for your game this year? Uh, yeah, I think it's just really developed my game. Uh, just the high pace uh, at practice, and we always get a little bit of about like 20 minutes just to work on whatever you want after practice, so your shots, the handling. So I, I think uh, my skills and just hockey IQ, I guess, has really improved. Yeah, I definitely think my game's grown with the practices we have. We have like a little bit of split practice. We get to learn our systems. I get to learn how to be better defensively and then have our little own skills at the end with uh, forward coach Sean Teagle. New assistant coach Sean Teagle doing great work for the Owen Sound Attack. We'll hear from him later on. First, let's take a look at Saturday's highlights versus the Erie Otters. We'll sweep it over to Gilmartin. He tries to dance around Nolan Seed. Seed will give him a bit of a cross check as they go into the corner. And now Sedley, turnover. Here's a shot. That was blocked by Lawrence. They follow it up and they score. Colby Saginaw. Sova, turnover as he sends it across. Hello, Danny Gore Mark picks Perry. it off. Gore looking to see what he's got. Finds Fantino, Third side of the net. Eight. Gore scores! Pappas, stick handling in tight quarters at the blue line. Sedley couldn't pick it up and a two on one develops now. Alfano with Saginaw. Alfano with shot. He scores. Shorts. It looked like the Otters were going to set it up nicely there to get a two-goal advantage. That was about to be a tic-tac-toe play. Really big block by Sam Sedley here with six minutes left. And that's the kind of play that should bring a bit of a confidence boost to Sam Sedley. Knight hasn't started off too strong just yet, but he's always capable. Here's Cairo to the net, and he scores. Great hands displayed there from Christian Cairo. Rolls out to Madenstein. Over to Jordan. Jordan shot wide. Puck comes down near the goal line. It was bunted out of the air by Gilmartin. Owen Sound handles it. Cedric Gaindon protects. Gaindon gets a shot away and he scores! 
Over to Sova, in with speed. Hands off to Terrence, Once drives to the goal, and he goes right into interview. George. Big time collision. Down is Ewans Sunday in the crease. Here's a shot, and they score. Here's Jordan behind his goal, banks it off the boards, calling for it up ice is Gaydon. Barlow finds him, great pass. Gaydon is in, short hand, and he scores! Cedric Gaydon, short handed! Silva over to Cairo, finds Brissett, shot scores! The Otters come right back, a power play goal. Is and it's picked up by the aforementioned Servak Petrovsky, drops for Sedley. Back over to Petrovsky. He's got a step coming to the goal. Petrovsky scores! There it is. Servak Petrovsky on the power play. Ewens flips it off the boards. Bouncing puck blocked by Morton. Pushed up now to Cedric Gaintal. Heading to the net is Brennan. Knocks it down. Brennan scores! Tomislav Brennan. And just like that, the attack have tied the game. Pips it out to Gaintal. Over to Gore. Puck doesn't settle down. Spins it back to Seed. Shot to the net. They score! Cal Ewens gloves it down and sends it right back in deep with just 2.10 to go. It comes out in front. Brennan scores! Down to the goal line. One time for Kilmart. Save rebound. Another stop from George. He had the chance. Desperation save from Carter George. Maybe his best of the game. And now Colby Barlow will steal it. Barlow up to the red line looking to the empty net. He scores! Owen Sound attack. Put up a five a goal, third period for the Owen Sound attack. A big two points versus the Erie Otters Saturday night in that first game of the two games against the Erie Otters Saturday Weekend night. Weekend doubleheader. Weekend doubleheader, that's what I was looking for. Now, guys, uh, before we go to Sunday's highlights, earlier on you guys went to Erie for two games, the first real road trip for the team in the regular season. What was that like for the two of you and the team in terms of team bonding earlier on? I found it was great. Like, uh, definitely the road trip on the way back. <laughs> we had to sing our rookie karaoke song. Oh, really everybody fun. wants to know, what was the song? I sung uh, Country Girl by Morgan Wallen. Nice. Uh, I don't even remember what it was now. I think, I forget, it's like, It Wasn't Me, you know that song? It's like, It Wasn't Me? Yeah, 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 yeah that yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, it wasn't by Morgan Wallen. Luke Bryant. Luke Bryant. I can't believe I made that mistake. Yeah, 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 no, that's okay, though. <laughs> Who won? Rookie karaoke. They didn't do a winner, actually. Uh, Gav, Gav won again and did his m, &M <laughs> from last year, so I, if there was a winner, it probably be him. But he's not a rookie, though. It doesn't count. No, no. Just participation rate. Yeah, yeah. Let's take a look now at those Sunday highlights versus the Erie Otters. Brissett's going to pick it up. Out at the blue line for Kairou. Back over to Brett Brissett. Christian Kairou a blast, and that was deflected in the slot. Sedley off the boards. Gets it ahead. Two on one for Owen Sound. Short-handed. Colby Barlow coming in. Barlow the great feet. A shot. They score! Servak Petrosky fires it home. A short-handed marker. It's 1-0 Owen Sound. Sova. Little head fake over to Kairou. Back up top. Sova won't shoot just yet. Might pull the trigger now. One-timer deflected to the goal. Votary is down. There's a shot, and they score. It gets banged home in front. A power play goal for the Otters. And it's picked up, turning ahead. Here comes Pappas over the line. Big stretch there from Seed to stay onside. Gore covering for his pinching blue liner. Gets it to Pappas. Gore out in front. Barlow scores! Colby Barlow restores the one-goal lead. Down low, Saganuk banks it out to the blue line here. Morton back to Saganuk. Morton wants it back. Catches and release. Scores! What a wrist shot there to pick the corner. As the Otters captain, Cameron Morton, ties the game. Chafin Fantino able to peel off. Here is Kairou on the backhand. Potential turnover. Gore sniffs that one out. Has Pappas to the net. Gore holding it, waiting. Leaves it off. Barlow fires, and he scores! A pair on the afternoon for Colby Barlow. And once again, the attack have the lead. Batted out of midair, rolls on net, and a save is made. Petrovsky will cycle it. Lawrence moves it behind the net for Burroughs. Out in front, Petrovsky scores! Servak Petrovsky with the insurance marker early in the third, and it's 4-2 Owen Sound. But it's all Owen Sound here now. Big hit there on Gaindahl, fighting through it. Gaindahl. Down low, Fantino, got Petrovsky across, he scores! 
the hat trick for Servak Petrovsky. And it is now 5-2 Owen Sound. Gets swept out of down the ice. And sadly, he doesn't realize Alfano's out of the box. Here's Alfano coming to the goal. Poke check on the follow-up. Brissette scores. So the Otters get one back. They still trail by a pair. Brett Brissett gets them their third goal of the game. Burroughs will steal to the empty net. He scores. Taking care of business on home ice. The attack sweep the Otters this weekend. And with that, they improve to 12 and 6 on the campaign. It's a four-point weekend over the Erie Otters. Own sound coming out victorious Saturday night and Sunday afternoon. Guys, the fans have an opportunity to skate alongside you guys after every Sunday home game. What are some fan interactions that stick out the most to you so far in your time at Owen Sound? Uh, I just think that, uh, you know, fans are just really here because they love the game and it's nice to see that, you know, you see all the kids and to think that you were one of them one day, it's pretty cool. It was actually weird, I signed the hand the other day, so that was, <laughs> that was one of the weirdest things I've signed, so. I don't know if that beats my forehead last year. <laughs> last year, yeah. <laughs> but me, it's, it's definitely got to be the little kids that look up to you. Like, you're really one of them one day, and you'd appreciate for what we do for them. Absolutely. Now, we do have a winner uh, for the trivia question. The trivia question was, who are the, uh, name five Ottawa board or Ottawa area players on the team? So, Ben, give the answer up. We got Nolan Seed, Cedric Gaynor, Caleb Lawrence, Thomas Lav Brennan, and Thomas Chafe. And Ben Cormier, not Sam Cormier, as you see there <laughs> on the screen. Sorry about that one, Ben. But uh, speaking about Ottawa players, that's or Ottawa born players and area players, you're one of, I believe, if my tally is correct, five Francophones on the team as well. Um, do you ever talk to any of the guys in French? Yeah, absolutely. I talk to most, like most of the French guys in French. And so, who would be in that group of Frenchies? It would be uh, yourself, be... Cedric. Denny talks a bit of French. Thomas Lav is French also, and I don't know if the other guys are French. Ch Chenard is also. I taught Chenard, so I know that he is <laughs> French, Francophone as well. Denny uh, went to French high school as well, so so that's five. Five on the team are Francophones, yeah. and you. Did, does it ever get said in the room to stop talking French? Uh, sometimes, because the guys, <laughs> some of the guys don't really understand, so we just like talking in yeah. French around them. I love that. I love that myself as a Francophone. So. Now, after Sunday's victory over the Erie Otters, Mark McKelvey had an opportunity to catch up with assistant coach Sean Tiekel about the busy week that was for the Owen Sound attack. Mark McKelvey standing ringside with Owen Sound Attack assistant coach Sean Tiekel following a 6-3 attack victory over the Erie Otters, completing a weekend sweep of their Midwest Division rival. And uh, Sean, looking at this weekend, how huge was this swing? Uh, a team that was right behind you in the standings, you get all four points. Uh, this has to feel really good. Yeah, it's a big weekend for us um, so far right now, probably the biggest weekend of the year. And to get those so-called eight points for us is massive and we can get a little separation from these guys in our division. It was a busy stretch of hockey over the last eight days. Now you get a little bit of rest till next Friday, but how do you think the team battled through a stretch of five games in eight days? Can't say enough good things. I thought the boys battled really hard. They showed a lot of character um, over the last little bit. Like you said, it's been a lot of hockey, a lot of practicing and being short bodied as we are. Um, just, you know, this group is really special and they just found a way. They found it, kept finding a way to win. It was just a huge week for us. For yourself uh, and, you know, as a coaching staff, but even thinking at it from a player's perspective, how important is it to get into a rhythm, though? Because we looked at that stretch uh, about a week ago where there was a week off between games. Now you play a ton of games in a short time frame. Uh, is there something to that, getting into a rhythm and a bit of momentum? 100%. You know, I, I think as, as players, like, they really don't want to practice anyways. You know, for them, it's, it's all about the games. And when you get those games, it's more of a playoff feel. And to get in that rhythm is good for them. And it obviously paid off for us this week. You mentioned about that playoff feel, kind of a series feel to this with two games in two days against the Erie Otters. Uh, some scrappy, some intense games right there. Uh, did it feel like your team was kind of ready for that push that they were going to bring? Yeah, I think, you know, Greg, Greg does such a great job of making sure practice is harder than the games, right? So our guys, they come in and they're battle ready and they're battle tested and they're ready to go. So um, can't say enough good things about what they've done this week.
couple players finally had that offensive breakout they were looking for, including Servak Petrovsky. Uh, did you feel he was maybe just squeezing the stick a little too tight? Yeah, for Servak, it was more just he was getting the chances. It was just it just wasn't going in for him. Um, I kind of talked to him yesterday a little bit about it. I said when one goes in, you know, four or five are going to go in and just so happened to be like that and I look a little bit like a fortune teller today. Now looking ahead next weekend, a couple of games against Eastern Conference opponents. You're pretty familiar with the Eastern Conference. Uh, what are you expecting in those matchups against Oshawa and North Bay? Yeah, you know, Oshawa is a tough team and, and North Bay again, they're they're going to be a good team on the East. They're on, up there in the standings. So we'll get the pre-scouts ready and we'll be ready for them. And obviously it's another big weekend for us about to be tested playoff wise. Certainly will be. Congratulations on this successful weekend and good luck in those matchups coming up. Thank you so much. All right, the attack back in action Friday night against the Oshawa Generals. A busy week this week for the Olenstown attack. Two games on the schedule this week against the Oshawa Generals Friday night on the road and then back home Saturday versus the North Bay Battalion. Thank you to Mark and Sean for that interview after Sunday's victory over the Erie Otters. Guys, uh, just over a little bit of a minute left for you guys. You guys are rookies, first time appearing on attack rap. What's a fun fact that you want the fans to know about you guys? Uh, fun fact is to tell people is like over COVID uh, we were getting really bored so we started a hobby farm with like chickens and like guinea hens so <laughs> I guess it stayed my dad has to look after them now but yeah it's, <laughs> that is fun yeah yeah I mean my fun fact go back to minor bantam again when we played against the Marlies in the finals me and Vilna faced off against uh, Beckett Senecki and Sam Dickinson which we faced off last week oh very cool uh, so guys, usually a lot of people that tend to watch our family members at home, they'll, they'll go online and they'll watch it. What's a message that you guys want to send to your family back home? Uh, I just say that I miss my dog. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. Uh, my parents might be watching, so I'll say hi to them. And I know my parents will watch tomorrow, so say hi and love you. So. Well, guys, it was a fun episode. We'll have to have you back again later on in the year. Thank you very much. It was a fun episode. Yeah, thanks for having thanks, me. Thanks, guys. Ben Cormier and Brain Rogers. On behalf of Adrian Musso, I'm Zach Scribner. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Attack Rap. We'll see you at the rink. the Rogers TV viewer response line. Email us or connect with us on social media. Watching hockey just got a power play with NHL Center Ice and Super Sports Pack. With up to 37 out-of-market NHL games a week, you'll always catch your favorite team no matter where you live. Whether it's big matchups you're looking for or following your top fantasy picks, it's all here. NHL Center Ice, part of the Rogers Super Sports Pack. All this for only $35.95 a month. Order through your remote on Channel 450 or call one 8 rogers one today. the shot that's good we'll see who gets it garrettson shot it but i'm pretty sure bob garrettson got behind the net to mcneil in front bolduki scores that's alex bolduk first ever gmhl junior hockey goal second period is normally their best period Scores! redirects at saint john ambulance we're all about community we teach life-saving skills and provide community support through our volunteer services. All St. John Ambulance product sales and training registrations support these important services. Volunteer, donate, or enroll in a program today so we can continue to have an impact on our community. Visit sja.ca to learn more. At St. John Ambulance, we do more than save lives. We change lives.